The Amici Noctis, the Friends of the Night, served a vital function during the early period of the American settlement. As the Sabbat thrived best on the frontier, where loose packs could roam the lands more freely, there was little in the way of law. So the courts of blood worked for several decades as the primary form of justice on the new frontier. Although the La Sombra are loath to admit it, many of the rite and traditions of the Sabbat were picked up from American natives and co-opted into their sect. However, as evidence of their dislike of, as they call it, inferior cultures, the La Sombra will in turn happily admit that they helped fund and encourage the genocide of them. As for why they did it, some claim it was because they were led to believe that the Aztecs' sacrifices to their sun god ensured that the sun would rise, and thus they sought to make sure it didn't. Others claim that it was some form of puppet mastery behind it all, a will stronger than most of their clans, who urged the La Sombra to wipe out the native people. Whatever the reasoning behind it, the keepers were ruthlessly efficient in their work. The La Sombra, more than any other part of the Sabbat, indulged in religious symbolism, most often Catholicism. There are many reasons for it, or at least multiple theories, but the fact of the matter is that much of the Sabbat's framework is borrowed, or at least parodied, whole cloth from the oldest Christian institution. The state of vampirism is unexplainable through science so far, and thus many Cainites turn to religion for their answers. The belief in Cain as the first vampire connects one to the Judaic, and subsequently Christian and Muslim, perception of a monotheistic god. Titles, sermons, rites. The ecclesiastical hierarchy of Catholicism works well when converted to a sect like the Sabbats. In an army as vast and disparate as the Sword of Cain's, any form of structure to enforce cohesion is a necessity, as the many civil wars have shown. The La Sombra know this, and thus they are strong proponents for the current system. As for their presence outside of the western parts of the world, it comes perhaps as a surprise that there are quite a few La Sombra present in China. While certainly not a great number, they have existed since at least 1300 BC and have managed to keep themselves alive despite the occasional violent encounters with the Wang Kuei and the other creatures of the night who wish to see them dead. After the eruption of There, which brought upon the La Sombra their first big dispersal, trade between East and West ensured that a few La Sombra lineages made their way into China. After all, the Roman Empire and the Han Dynasty were known to have conducted trading. In China, the La Sombra took on a much more passive role, as the Confucian ideals made it difficult for the keepers to directly control the mortals. Instead, they became sages and spiritual guides, which fitted much better into the societal mindset of the kind. For a time, this kept the Chinese La Sombra occupied, until the arrival of the West once more. The Sabbat, newly formed, pushed its ideals into China, and almost half of the ancient lineages of the East were destroyed, the others adopting the Sword of Cain's way of thinking. Egypt, and in many ways the northern coast of Africa, has rarely appealed to the La Sombra. Much of its land is dominated by the Setites, who share no love with the Keepers, and has enough political clout both amongst local Cainites as well as kind governments to keep their influence at a minimum. Further south, however, one quickly finds evidence of both the Antediluvian as well as Elder La Sombras, who ventured far after the first dispersal. In Ethiopia, there is a strong La Sombra presence, and Montano is said to have been embraced in the lands between Ethiopia and Kenya. The antediluvian wandered these lands in search of a perfect child all those years back, and many more experiments than Montano's were conducted. Abyss mysticism is also not uncommon amongst the African La Sombra, and unlike their northern cousins, they rarely intervene in mortal politics or amass influence. Instead, they isolate themselves, conduct their studies, and slowly expand their brood. Philosophy and religion seem to dominate their minds, and they lack cohesive leadership or, in fact, ambitions outside of their own hermetic studies. Even today, the Abyss's children have little interest in the politics of their sect, seeing it only as a useful tool to hide behind. Unlike many other clans, the La Sombra have spawned very few bloodlines. Usually, the only difference is what disciplines aside from obtenebration the local La Sombra have decided to focus on. Perhaps it is thanks to the Amici Noctis, or their clan's early predilections to travel, that the La Sombra has remained such a cohesive clan. La Sombra tend to embrace those with ambition, ruthlessness, and a certain distaste for humanity. They shy away from public figures and leaders simply because these tend to be too ensconced in the mortal realm of gratification. 
rather than the hounded assistant who spends night after night fixing the mistakes of their superiors without receiving proper credit. One who can do that and still persevere, especially if they can also retain their ambition and seething contempt for their incompetent superiors makes for good recruits. Once a potential child has been found, the testing begins. The sire sets about completely ruining the lives of their targets in order to see if they have what it takes to withstand the La Sombra unlife. This is done specifically by targeting whatever the potential values the most, be it their family, their status or their money. The goal is to see whether their will is tempered or broken by these setbacks. A promising candidate is someone who is spurred on by these failures, who sees them only as means to harden their own resolve to do what must be done to the world and to themselves. The sire then appears and offers the candidate vampirism, whether it be as a solution to their problems or a way to escape them and become something else. They generally refrain from telling their new child the truth. After all, that might backfire horrendously, and soon enough the newly embraced La Sombra has dealt with their past life and can now focus on the present. This crucible has a high turnover rate. Only about half of the mortals deemed worthy survive their embrace with their minds intact. 10 to 20% of those are lost before they are even fully welcomed into the Sabbat, unable to endure the demands put on them, and within the next five years, conflicts, accidents, and vendettas will have whittled this number down to between two to three hundred, depending on luck. Within a hundred years of the thousand potential La Sombra, only about a quarter of a hundred may still be alive, if fate allows it. This is another accepted truth of the Clan of the Keepers, their Darwinian mindset at peace with these numbers. After all, perfection is only achieved when all flawed pieces are removed. La Sombra tend to flock together based on their outlooks on, on life, yet at the same time they abhor institutions, knowing that such might come to rival the established system of blood courts and Amici Noctis and jeopardize the clan's stability. Still, there are some prominent factions. The Crusaders are the La Sombra deathly loyal to the Sabbat, ultra-conservatists who put aside their clan interests for the pursuit and destruction of the hated antediluvians. These hardliners have little tolerance for other agendas, considering them dangerous distractions from the real goal of the sect. The faithful are La Sombra who remain deeply devout, despite or perhaps because of their undeath. They believe themselves damned by God, but still capable instruments of his will on earth. The faithful are few, and always have been, most La Sombra finding it difficult to remain adherent to any faith post-death. The Black Angels are a group of La Sombra who consider themselves literal devils doing the work of Satan on Earth, although they were reputedly active even before Christianity. Some claim they are connected to the Bali, demon-worshipping canines who are to blame for countless blasphemous and wicked acts through history. The Kings and Queens of Shadow are, unlike what their names imply, some of the most unfortunate of the La Sombra. They are the ones who retain contact with the mortal world to ensure that money and kind assets are properly handled. This role is often assigned to a La Sombra as punishment, or handed to a less than promising child who lacks the drive for inhuman excellence. The Corsairs are a La Sombra with a deep love for the ocean. They become sailors, fleet officers, or even pirates, preferring the open seas to the land. There is even reportedly a former Soviet submarine under La Sombra command that pursue Camarilla targets. The Fatalists believe that there is no free will, that they are all puppets to their elders, obviously not a faction loved by the Amici Noctis. Similar are the Doomed, the Exhibitionists who do nothing to hide their vampirism from the outside world, reveling in it instead. Their clanmates gladly put these rabid dogs down, for their own good. La Sombra are pragmatists to the core. There is a strong belief not only in the rightness of the Sabbat, but that they can and will win. Should this belief falter, however, who can say how long the Keepers will remain with the sect that they helped found? The Primogen Council gives its eternal gratitude to Maximilian S. Hardcastle, whose wisdom and experience helped guide our Council's decisions in the long night, and sends his best wishes to the elders Dante the Canine, What's that smell? It's blood, and Remy Van Roy for their loyalty and service to its cause. It would also wish to thank the Ancile Edward Reed, Colin Gifford, and Harry Wyckoff, as well as his ardent neonates, for their continued support. And thank you for watching. Now be careful out there, for Gehenna may soon be upon us.